Okay, welcome to the next in our series of application context videos. We spent a few minutes thinking about a key bit of economic data that could be helpful context for you in your exams. This time, let's look at the, uh, the yield on 10-year government bonds. Now, the yield on a bond is effectively the percentage rate of interest that a government must offer to purchase of new issues of government debt. So bonds are uh, forms of debt issued by governments. They're issued in the capital markets and uh, they attract a price. And the yield is the interest over the price of the bond. So it's essentially the rate of interest that the government must pay when it is issuing debt. What's interesting, I think, is to think about countries where bond yields are relatively high compared or contrasted with where bond yields are low. So Brazil is a good example to add to your revision notes. Uh, in Brazil, uh, one of the emerging countries, of course, one of the BRIC nations, uh, Brazil's 10-year bond yields are actually 12.3% at the moment, one, one of the highest amongst the countries that I study. And in Mexico, yields on bonds are 8.8%, and in India, 7.2%. So I think Brazil, Mexico, and India, three good examples for your revision notes of countries where bond yields are high. And... Uh, this is in part because of the risks that investors face when they're buying debt issued by the governments of Brazil, of India and Mexico. When we think about those risks, there are essentially three risks. One is currency risk. So if you're buying debt denominated in the Brazilian real or the Indian rupee or the Mexican peso, there's a risk that the currency itself will depreciate in value, thereby reducing your returns. So volatile currencies carry risk. There's also the default risk, which is the danger that the government, perhaps short of tax revenues, perhaps running into a debt trap, a lack of sustainability, might default on some of its loans. And of course, if you're the holder of debt, you may have to take a loss on that. And there's also the inflation risk. So when you're buying debt, which is denominated in money terms, the real value of the bond when it's repaid, when it matures, is going to be lower, of course, when you take inflation into account. So countries with high bond yields typically have significant currency risk, default risk and inflation risk. A lot of that, of course, is linked to the geopolitics of the countries and the regions concerned. High bond yields make it expensive for a government in a country such as Brazil to borrow money as part of their fiscal policy. Now, those were three countries with yields that are pretty high. Let's contrast. Uh, in Germany, for example, the government can borrow for 10 years at an interest rate of less than 1%. Go back a year or two, that interest rate was actually negative, uh, but it's now 0.9%, but still very low. And in the UK, the yield is 1.9%. I think in the States, the last time I looked, the yield had jumped up to 2.9%. But again, although yields are going up, they remain very low. Uh, so in contrast, bond yields in nations such as Germany, the UK and US, USA are very low. And of course, the, part of the reason for this is that these nations, and it includes countries like Japan and Switzerland, they have better credit ratings and carry less risk for investors. Now, bond yields are going up at the moment. As you take your exams in 2022, the interest rate on new issues of government debt is going up in the majority of countries. And that's mainly, largely because of the surge in world inflation. I'm sure you're following this. The cost of living crisis uh, in the UK is echoed and amplified in some cases across many parts of the world. Now, this is important if bond yields rise because the 10-year government bond yield is considered the kind of benchmark for interest rates on all kinds of things like mortgages and corporate loans. So if UK bond yields are going up, currently 1.9%, that could lead to a rise in the cost of a home loan or a business loan. So there we go, a bit of context for you. Hopefully that was useful on 10-year government bonds.